Yeah, all right. Looks like we're jumping into the first game of match number one here. Pennsylvania State University taking on the University of Connecticut. It is going to be Warrior versus Mage. And Mage, this is a class that we've talked about pretty much the whole time now as being the class with probably the most diversity within its archetypes. Yesterday we saw Tempo Mage and we saw Freeze Mage, and now we're seeing Mech Mage even involved with that. It seems like all of its decks really just hinge on a couple of key cards yeah. and then use the powerful Mage cards to support that. Yeah, it was, it's interesting. I was talking to uh, QXCBZ, and he's telling me that he was a Freeze Mage player. And they brought Mage, and I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, they're, they're definitely going with that Freeze Mage. Well, it looks <laughs> like they, they pulled a fast one on me. They're going with Mech Mage. And another interesting story that we were talking about a little bit earlier. The three guys here from the University of Connecticut were also on the Heroes of the Storm collegiate team that got top 16 at Heroes of the Dorm. Yeah, and that's really, honestly, not too much of a surprise when you hear something like that. You know, these are going to be the kinds of guys who want to compete in video games, you know, just right up their alley. And yeah. more importantly, you know, you know the, these very thought-provoking games where you have to min-max everything and make sure you kind of dot in all your I's and cross in all your T's. Um, you know, kind of going back to, uh, to QXCBZ, He's not only just a, he plays a lot of freeze mage, but he's actually just their resident mage expert. Mm -hmm. He's the guy who's been playing on the archetypes, trying to figure out what makes every single one of them tick. And you see that expertise coming into play right away. I mean, the opportunity to play this mech warper, but you're running it right into a fiery war axe. So holding onto this and seeing if you can get a better position for this, I think it's a, a great play to be in because you're leading into mirror entity. You got pilot shutter afterwards. Maybe you can pick up a spider tank and get two drops in the same turn. Yeah, exactly. Making sure that you get immediate value out of the mech warper is actually a pretty big deal. Say on turn three, you pick up a snow chugger. Play mech warper, snow chugger. The warrior has to make a decision. Do we attack in the snow chugger, freeze ourselves, and remove the, the use of weapons? Or do we take away the ramp from the mech warper? And so holding on to that, definitely a good choice. And what do you think of this matchup in general? Patron Warrior versus Mech Mage. It's not something that we've seen too much of since they sort of had different eras. Yeah, I feel like Mech Mage is one of these decks that's made to perform specifically against Grim Patron. One of the big things you're looking for is just very heavy consistency uh, in your games. Really, the one tool that Warrior has to so effectively fight against that is Fire War Axe. So Penn State's gotten that Fire Axe right away, and as a result, you're seeing UConn have to kind of slow their, their game down a little bit and make sure that they're that they're dividing up all their resources in the correct way. So a card like Piloted Shredder is absolutely what they want to fight back in a situation like this. So typically I would say without a Fiery War Axe, Penn State in this situation would have been at a disadvantage. But because they have that super efficient tool to fight against it, Whoa. it's a totally totally different situation. And uh, kind of uh, <laughs> mechs are, are ready to come out this game, TJ. That's pretty funny, actually. If they didn't have that slam and didn't have a, a way to remove that mech warper off the board, that could have spelled disaster. Because you kind of would have just thrown out the second Mech Warper and just emptied their hand, basically. Yeah, and this is the kind of situation where suddenly that Mech Warper being in the hand really changes the dynamic of this. I mean, you're looking at the option to play three, up to three minions this turn with Mech Warper, Clockwork Gnome, and the Piloted Shredder. Yeah. The question you have to ask yourself is, is can you pass up this Goblin Last Mage this turn? Uh, when they choose to go with this direction, I think a card that's largely on their mind is Death Spike. So rather yeah. than just have one threat out, they want to have a board full of threats that's ready to start attacking. Yeah, definitely. And they know that with three mechs on the board, it's going to be pretty likely that they are going to have one survive next turn. So they can play Goblin Blast Mage plus ping. And keep in mind, they still have that mirror entity up. So uh, the next creature that uh, Penn State plays here, they're going to get one too. So that's going to be another creature on the board that's going to be tough to remove. And with some burn spells in their hand, we might be looking at a situation where Yukon's going to want to try and just go on the aggressive here and close out the game quick. Yeah, Mech Mage is not... Um, a very subtle deck in its approach. It kind of wants yeah. to get minions out and start punching right away. And this is kind of the exact situation that you're looking for when you're playing Mech Mage versus Group Patron. You want to get out so many minions that they don't have an opportunity to actually remove them all. So it buys you a lot of value, buys you a lot of time, puts you in the right kind of situation where you can just overwhelm your opponent and then work from there. Penn State, meanwhile, uh, maybe testing the waters with that Whirlwind a little bit, but kind of looking for a, uh, you know, a better execute target, and maybe even something like a 2-1 or a 3-1 to pick off with uh, this Armorsmith, instead Patient Assassin is down now. And Penn State really going to have to work hard to balance their minions because this Goblin Blast Mage, this is about to be a very hefty board to deal with. Yeah, with just one health remaining on the Armorsmith, definitely going to take that one out. They can fit in a ping and double Fireball in the hand of Yukon. If they're able to, to keep this pressure up, these minions stick on the board for a couple turns, all of a sudden we're looking at a situation where Yukon can start closing out the game within the next couple turns. And you kind of can even see deliberating over attacking with this patient assassin. It may not seem like a big deal, but this is one of those decks where every single point of damage could really add up. 
And so with a card like Patient Assassin, can very easily be caught in a Whirlwind or yep. maybe even a Death Spite activation. So to bring it out of stealth, it may buy them a couple extra points of damage, but definitely makes it a little bit more vulnerable so to stuff. So the trade-off you have to think about is, is Penn State going to play a minion that I have to worry about, or is that extra couple points of damage maybe worth it? Yeah. Penn State, really, it's a tough situation when you're trying to deal with that mirror entity. Like, what do you give your opponent that's going to be the least effective? Yeah, I know. Ac Acolyte of Pain can be rough because uh, as a mage, so even as a mech mage, choices. you can use Acolyte of Pain as a draw engine. You just ping it if you, you're running out of cards, and all of a sudden, you get multiple sources of, of uh, card draw. And Penn State's thinking, maybe we just wait until we can get out, like, a Warsong Commander oh, God, and a Grim Patron. And in that scenario, we can just throw one of the Grim Patrons into the spawn Warzone Commander. Exactly, and that's it's just a tough situation to be in. I mean, they get the news it's mirror, and so you, you know, I'm assuming they thought it was pretty obvious at this point. So they're having to weigh what's it worth in terms of popping this mirror right now and having a, more, a little bit more Whoa. pressure, or being able to actually, you know, give my opponent the ability to draw cards. And Argent Commander gets picked up from Yukon, and uh, honestly, I see that Argent Commander, and I think UConn has really done their research into what kinds of decks are going to be problematic for, for decks that are out there right now. I mean, this is a card that we haven't seen in a very long time in competitive play. Yeah, back when Argent Commander was popular, the strongest card in a lot of players' decks was something like Azure Drake, where it had four health, it lined up nicely with Argent Commander. We don't see play from it now because you look at the strong cards, cards like Sludge Belcher, Emperor Thorsan, they have five health, which is just out of reach of Argent Commander, so a lot of times you don't get much value out of it. So it's really interesting to see it in this era of play. Yeah, so when I look at that card and I see it in this list, something that's really interesting to take note of is the kinds of cards that are getting played right now. Uh, when Argent Commander kind of fell out, people were very focused on that mid-range minion utility, and there were so many that were good that if pushing damage was a little bit harder of a task. But I take a look at this Mech Mage build, and if you get off to an early lead and you can supplement that with an Argent Commander, that's a very difficult situation to get back from. It's a pretty resilient body. You can get in a lot of damage. Uh, you know, they just wanted that little bit of extra reach. Two Fireballs, Frostbolt, and Argent Commander in hand. I mean, how does Penn State climb out of this? That's 19 points of burn. I mean, it's over two turns, but that's still a lot of burn. And with Penn State taking damage, this turn, Yukon can do something like throw out a Frostbolt, which freezes the Despite, makes it not able to be used. And I mean, this is looking really grim for Penn State, unless they're able to piece together a crazy Patron turn, which next turn, all they can do is use Warsong Commander Patron without something like an Inner Rage to be able to propagate a little bit more. It's going to be really tough. Yeah, I mean, I think you pretty much nailed the play on the head. Frostbolt plus Arch Commander is going to set up a very difficult turn for Penn State if there's even a way to come back from this. I mean, Northrend is a one-way ticket. If you're headed there, and yeah. Archie Commander's here deliver, and Penn State, they don't even look surprised by this choice. Yeah, they have to be a little bit confused. Like, did they did they have an unstable portal that, that snuck past this earlier on in the game? <laughs> Where did that Archie Commander come from? Well, this is really the last hurrah here, is if the Grim Patrons would be enough. But you, know, you gotta do what you gotta do, but UConn, great opening from them. And it's led to this mid-game play where there's just too much burn for Penn State to deal with. Yeah, they're not even able to clear off the entire board here. They would have to ignore the Arjun Commander. Even with just a ping, Yukon would be one damage off of Lethal. Yeah. And we can see they got large amounts of overkill, maybe even going to throw a fireball at their own face. <laughs> they got plays for days, TJ, but it's only going to take one of them. Fireball is going to give Yukon a 1-0 lead. And that Mech Mage deck doing exactly what it's designed to do. 